Five years into its lifespan, we still have a lot to like about Epic Seven. High quality anime inspired visuals, gorgeous hand drawn 2D sprites, challenging PvE content that fills you with a sense of progression, and of course, intense player versus player battles. As a day one player, I've seen this game's evolution. It's a beautiful, free to play friendly game that has grown over the years in tandem with one of my favorite communities in gaming. There's really no other mobile RPG on the market quite like Epic Seven. And with all it has to offer, it could seem really daunting jumping in into its fifth year, especially if you're a new player. But it's okay, that's what I'm here for. Hey, what's going on everyone? I'm Sue, and with just 15 minutes of your time, I'll show you almost everything there is in Orbis so that you don't have to watch this game from the sidelines anymore. You can actually play the animation. So, without further ado, let's learn all about the seventh world. Epic Seven follows the story of Raz El Clair, the heir of the Covenant who was created by the goddess DJ to protect the world of Orbis and defeat the Archdemon. Each time Raz fails on his mission, the world resets. The game's tutorial takes place during Raz's sixth failed attempt, with the main game allowing the player to experience Raz's seventh time through the world. Once you've completed the tutorial and reached the game's main lobby, there are two things you'll want to focus on for the foreseeable future. Adventure, to progress through the game's main narrative, as well as the Adventurous Path, a series of quests designed to help new players. If ever you're unsure of what you should be doing as a new player, consult the Adventurous Path. Once you beat Chapter 1, Stage 4 of Adventure, you will unlock the Selective Summon located on the game's summon screen, which can be found in the main lobby, or by hitting the four blue symbols in the top right-hand corner, which will bring up a menu of all of the game's features. The Selective Summon allows players to receive 10 random summons consisting of heroes, which are the game's playable characters, as well as artifacts, which are accessories that can be equipped to heroes to give them bonus effects. Don't like your initial 10 summons? Don't worry. You could try again as many times as you like until you find a set of 10 that you like. I recommend choosing a selective summon set with a 5 star hero in it. The best ones as of the date of this recording for new players are going to be Destina, who is a strong healer that is useful both early and late game, as well as Isaria, a ranger who is useful in a multitude of PvE content as you progress through the game. These are two great choices, but if another 5 star hero besides them catches your eye, feel free to take them. Epic Seven is a game played for fun, and your enjoyment should come first and foremost. What I generally avoid though is taking a 5 star artifact to begin with, as what you need right now as a new player are strong heroes to clear content. Another amazing aspect of E7 compared to its peers is the fact that 3 and 4 star heroes and artifacts are some of the strongest in the game. If you see some of these heroes or artifacts in your summons along your journey, make sure you hold on to them. I'd in general recommend holding on to at least one copy of everything you summon, as things constantly receive improvements or buffs in this game. Yes, that's right, even lowly 3 stars can be amongst the best heroes and artifacts in the entire game. I'm looking at you, ROL and Daydream Joker. Now that you have your 5 star hero, let's take some time to discuss team building in Epic Seven. Your basic team composition to get started in PvE usually consists of a tank, Soul Weaver, and two other characters of your choice. Luckily for us, Raz is a passable tank that will only improve after clearing episode 2 of the story where you will unlock a specialty change quest to bring out his full power. If you didn't get a Soul Weaver during your selective summons, feel free to use Prince Aether until you're able to unlock Montmorency from the game's connection menu. The connection menu can be found in the main lobby. Connections are a great place for you to recruit some of the staple units to help you jumpstart your journey in Epic Seven, and several will hold value for the entire time you play the game. As for your last two spots, since we're already talking about connections, I recommend Free Spirit Tiaria. She can be obtained from the connections menu after clearing chapter two, stage two. <laughs> Here I am, more beautiful than the morning dew, more graceful than a blooming rose. I am Tiaria. <laughs> what she may lack in humility, she more than makes up for in AoE brutality. Tiaria will be your first Moonlight hero, which are usually alternate versions of the game's roster from another world or timeline. Speaking of Moonlights, for your last spot, I recommend choosing a hero from the Moonlight Blessing, which is unlocked at the start of Chapter 2 and can be found in the game's main lobby. This system allows you to choose one 5-star rarity Moonlight hero from amongst a select pool for free. Spectre Tenebria is my, and most, players' recommendations from new heirs, as she's one of the most powerful characters in the entire game. 
excellent not only early on, but even more so late game in a huge variety of content. Dark Corvus and Martial Artist Ken are also solid choices for those of you who want to focus more on PvP. Moonlight 5 Star Heroes, or ML5s for short, are equally as powerful as they are rare, so make sure you take one you will enjoy your journey with and won't regret later on. Once Free Spirits area is unlocked and your party is complete, you'll unlock a new branch of the adventurer's path called Beautiful Pursuer. The purpose of the Beautiful Pursuer quest is to teach you the basics of improving your characters and giving them the proper equipment they need. Without understanding these fundamentals, you won't get very far in Epic 7, no matter how many rare 5-star characters you have. Let's explain character and gear progression, as they're perhaps the most important part of Epic 7, at least in my opinion. The most obvious way to increase the strength of your heroes is to level them up. Levels can be obtained by bringing characters with you into various different PvE stages and gaining experience, or XP for short. You can also feed your characters penguins, creatures that provide large amounts of XP by using the level up button found in the hero menu. Penguins are obtained via the Sanctuary's Forest of Souls, which is unlocked after Chapter 3, Stage 8. Use the Breath of Orbis you obtain throughout your journey in the Sanctuary to unlock all sorts of new features to speed up your progress, things like creating spirit blooms to promote your heroes, as well as crafting equipment to outfit those same heroes. You may have noticed while leveling heroes that they have a level cap. By default, you can level a hero 10 times for each star rarity they have unlocked. So, 3 star heroes can reach level 30, while 5 star heroes can reach level 50 to start out. Once a hero reaches the cap, use the promotion button and feed spirit blooms to them in order to raise them to the next star tier. You can repeat this process up to a maximum of 6 stars or level 60, which is the game's cap. When you first start out, promotion will be difficult, but becomes easier with time as you acquire more spirit blooms from quests and are able to purchase more of them via the Forest of Souls. In addition to levels and promotions, we have to visit the topic of Awakenings. Unlocked in Chapter 3, players can spend runes and catalysts to awaken their heroes. Awakenings increase the base parameters of your heroes and also give extra effects to their skills, so it's important to do this right away for the heroes that you intend to use frequently. Runes are color-coded to a hero's element and can be farmed via the Spirit Altar. Check Spirit Altar to see which runes are available that day and plan accordingly. Catalysts may also be required for Awakenings and can be found throughout your journey in the Adventure Mode. Looking for a specific Catalyst? Simply tap on the Catalyst in question to bring up a useful menu that shows you its location and will warp you right to it. Catalysts may also be required to Skill Enhance your heroes. Skill Enhancement is a way to strengthen abilities and reduce cooldowns of your character's skills. 3 stars simply need only Catalyst to enhance their skills, while 4 and 5 star base heroes additionally require an item called Mulligora. Mulligora are finite and should only be spent on heroes you intend to play for a very long time. Don't worry about spending them early on, as Free Spirit Tiaria will come fully skill enhanced, letting her do the heavy lifting for you while you learn the basics. You will earn your first set of Mulligora from the Beautiful Pursuer Path, but they can also be obtained weekly from the game's various shops, the Forest of Souls, and various different quest lines. There's also one to be obtained weekly from joining a guild in addition to other amazing perks, so make sure you join one right away. Can't find a guild? Use the game's useful in-game guild recruitment tool or ask around Epic 7 streams and social media. There's always people willing to help you out. Beautiful Pursuer also teaches you the Memory Imprint system. This is essentially how E7 handles duplicate heroes you obtain from summons, much like other games. When you acquire a duplicate hero, simply go over to Memory Imprint and feed the duplicate to your original to get access to their imprint release, a passive skill that gives bonus stats to other members in your party. By using the item Ego Fragment obtained from the game's shops, you can also unlock their imprint concentration, which gives the hero access to bonus stats. Releases for the party? Concentration is only for one hero. Simple, right? Let's round out this section with arguably the most important part, which is equipment and artifacts. Let's start with artifacts as it's much easier to understand. Artifacts are obtained via quests as well as summons and can be equipped to a character via the hero menu located just above the necklace slot. 
Artifacts can be enhanced using charms obtained throughout your journey, and just like with imprints, you can feed duplicates to them to increase their potency up to a maximum of six copies. If you're wondering which artifacts you should use to get started, try some of the ones that are shown on your screen now. Finally, we come to equipment, which is probably the most important thing. Each hero in E7 can hold six pieces of equipment, a weapon, helmet, armor, necklace, ring, and of course, boots. Each of these pieces has an item level, main stat, substats, rarity, and set bonus. Item level corresponds to how strong the quality of the item is. The higher the number, the better. Use what you have at the start of the game, but eventually try to progress towards only upgrading level 78 or ideally 85 plus equipment as these are the most valuable ones in the late game. The main stat of a piece of equipment refers to this value that's displayed here. For weapons, helmets, and armor, this statistic is fixed, so don't worry about it. Necklaces, rings, and boots can have varied main stats. To help you get started, I've shown some of the most useful main stats for each piece for your knights, soul weavers, damage dealers, and characters that rely on debuffs. You may have noticed that boots are a special case that almost always want speed, and we'll talk more about that in just a second. You can strengthen equipment by enhancing it using charms or powder, which are gained from simply playing the game or selling your unwanted equipment. For each level the equipment gains, the main stat will increase in value. When an equipment reaches level 3, 6, 9, 12, or 15, as indicated on the handy auto level button, one of the equipment's substats will be increased or unlocked at random. Substats further strengthen your heroes. Each piece of equipment starts with between 1 and 4 substats and can hold a maximum of 4. Try to only enhance Heroic, which is purple, or Epic, which is red, rarity equipment, as these start with more substats unlocked and therefore give more overall stats to your heroes. To find out what each stat does, check out this handy table on your screen. Ideally, you want to give your Knights and Soul Weavers high health, defense, and some effect resistance. Your damage dealers are usually going to want to have critical hit chance, critical hit damage, in addition to whatever stat they need to increase their damage output, such as attack percentage. Regardless of what hero you're building, there's a pretty high chance that you will want speed as a substat. Speed is the strongest stat in Epic 7 currently, as it lets you take more turns and dictate the pace of the battle. Try to get pieces with high speed substats whenever possible. Finally, let's talk about equipment sets. By pressing and holding on to a piece of equipment, you can see a set bonus listed at the bottom along with a corresponding number. If you equip a hero with multiple pieces of equipment from the same set, you will get a bonus. Try mixing and matching sets to create unique and powerful builds for your heroes. Unsure of which sets to use? Check out some of these that are listed on your screen now. Once you clear Chapter 7 Stage 9, you will unlock the Hunt game mode. This is one of the most important modes in all of E7 as it's how you farm and forge new and stronger pieces of equipment. To discuss Hunt at length is beyond the scope of this video, as it would take far too much time. My advice would be to start farming Wyvern for speed set pieces and push to the highest difficulties you can whenever possible. You'll have a much easier time, by the way, if you focus on strengthening blue units, especially those found in the game's connections. If you want to learn more in depth about this game's equipment system and all it has to offer, or just want to know what to shoot for when it comes to advanced Wyvern teams, check out my new player equipment guide as well as my Wyvern 13 guide. You could also hit up my good buddy Tristan Wolf and his guides on YouTube. And that's basically it. You're now armed with all the knowledge you need to go forth and experience all Epic 7 has to offer. There's still a lot we haven't covered in this video, by the way, so let's just quickly run through some of the other findings on Orbis. Arena is a great way for you to obtain Skystones weekly to summon more heroes and obtain conquest points to get powerful item level 88 gear from the shop. Feel free to fight NPCs that are provided for you to get used to this game mode while you are still acquiring currency in the process. Once you reach the end game, you'll be able to take on players from all over the world in exciting real-time battles via World Arena. This is one of the game's best and most fun features. If you want to learn more, check out all the various other content creators who stream matches regularly. Labyrinth is a maze-like map you may have encountered in the game's adventure mode. Here, players can get some exclusive loot as well as ancient coins which can be exchanged for charms to power up your necklaces and rings. Abyss is a very challenging game mode with some of the game's best rewards. 
Try to push as far as you can every day to massively increase the power of your account early on. Side stories unlock after clearing episode 1. Here, you can learn more about the various heroes of Orbis and farm up some sweet loot to boot. You can also switch to any previous side story you may have missed out on, which also unlocks a banner that allows you to summon that specific hero. I highly recommend Tamarin's side story and summon banner as she's arguably the strongest PvE character in the game and someone you will not regret picking up. <laughs> twinkle, twinkle, I'll be your star in the darkness. Episode 1's completion also unlocks specialty changes as well as galaxy summons. Specialty changes drastically increase certain 3-star heroes' performance to be some of the best heroes in the game, and you can find this under the game's recruit menu. Galaxy summons let you try to summon for more Moonlight heroes to add to your roster using galaxy bookmarks. These galaxy bookmarks can be obtained via the game's shop using gold transmit stones. If you complete episode 2, by the way, you'll unlock the Moonlight Theater. This will give you another chance at a free Moonlight 5-star hero. I highly recommend taking either Conqueror Lilius or Mediator Kowarik with this selector. Lastly, get in the habit of checking the game's ongoing events tab to find out about web events and other happenings in the game. They usually come with a bunch of free goodies every day, so make sure you do them. Okay, so it was a little bit longer than 15 minutes, but you'll forgive me, right? If you have any more questions, feel free to reach out to me on Discord, YouTube, or Twitch at IM underscore TSU. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and hopefully I'll see you in Orbis real soon. Bye-bye now.